But first, thousands of people marched to City Hall yesterday to protest about ever-increasing house prices. Why is housing so unaffordable these days? And how has it got to this point? It's a stage at which it looks like a lot of people aren't going to be able to afford to live in London and also other cities around the country. Who can solve the housing crisis? Call 0345 6060 973. I worked out the other day that I spend roughly 24 hours a week on the coach. It's 12 journeys a week from central London to South Oxfordshire, where I live. It takes about 90 minutes each way. It works out at 24 hours a week. And I worked all that out on the coach. Um, I, I, I'm aware that moaning about it doesn't go down well, because the most common response to sounding like you're moaning about it is, well, it's your choice. Why don't you move closer to work? And I do sort of understand that. Except I don't think it's really a choice anymore. Um, I sat on the coach, obviously, uh, and looked at the prices of homes that uh, we might be able, be able to afford on the Met line, Zone 9, so not very close. And there was one house. I say house, it was a flat, a one-bed flat in a dump of a building. £260,000. I can't afford to live closer to work. What about renting, I hear you say, which is fair enough. Check that out on the coach as well. The cheapest average rental price in London is £313 a week for a one-bed flat in Hammersmith. That's £1,200 a month, fifteen grand a year, one bedroom. I find this seminally depressing. London is becoming a city now where its cleaners, its shop workers, its nurses, its teachers, its police officers won't be able to afford to live in. And yesterday there was a massive march, thousands marching to City Hall, calling on Boris to keep down private rents and build more social housing. And I'm surprised it was only thousands really, and I would have been there myself if I weren't on the coach the whole time. How have we got to this stage, 0345 973 where London and other cities, like Oxford, have become so expensive that it's pricing out, you know, 99% of people trying to live in them. And it's not just buying a home that is such a distant dream for so many people. Renting. People spend three quarters of their wages on renting in London so that they can be close to work or to family or to friends. The New Era Estate, I'm sure you've heard of it, this, this estate in, in Newham, where 93 families had to fight eviction because a US investor wanted to buy up the estate for $11 billion. And they eventually won, but what a battle that was. How impossible is it becoming to live in London? What do you think the future is for this city if its cleaners and its shop workers and its police force can't live in it? 0345 6060 973. And it's not just a conversation about London, although the problem in London is greater, I think, than a lot of places around the country. But you look at cities like Oxford, you look at places like Bath, where it's the same problem. But it's more acute in London for sure. 0345 973 You can text 84850. You can tweet at Tom Swarbrick1. Let's get some pointers for our conversation. Let's speak to Sonia Poulton, who is a journalist and social commentator. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having me. No problem. This, I mean, this is a genuine, real, unavoidable issue, isn't it? It's awful. I mean, I think what you've just said in the intro really just about sums it up. The truth is, is we have no political will to change the situation. Obviously, what happened, just to go back over the last few um, generations of people who have been struggling, obviously a lot of the housing stock was sold off in the the, the, the whole idea that you could buy your own social housing mm. under the Thatcher government, which was great for many people because they were finally able to get their foot on the ladder. But I had this conversation the other day with a couple who would, whose um, parents had been able to buy their property for 12 thousand pound and sold it eventually for ninety one thousand pounds to a private investor and so what we have is a situation whereby there was a recent poll which showed that over 70 percent of private landlords are mps which tells you there is no political will to change the system and i tell you why 25 billion um, we use on housing benefit of which nine billion goes to private landlords so clearly there is a real issue within parliament about the investments that are being made there and we really need to look at that issue, and I'm not sure that that has been addressed as fully as it should in the media. What happens in 10, 15, 20 years' time if this keeps going on at the trajectory it seems to be? 
Well, what, I think the aim really is to gentrify London. What you will find is that actually, as you've already discovered yourself, most people will be priced out of the big cities. And so what you will create is, well, sort of these ghost towns, really, mm. of just people who've got these second homes, not necessarily using them. Um, and, and it just... W- what we need to do, we really need to start investing now in replenishing the housing stock. And we must change the law. We simply must. It isn't OK anymore to sell off social housing. It would have been at one time. And I'm not you know, attacking anybody who did it because I absolutely understand why they did. But we also need to look to Europe. We are part of Europe. And in France, in other parts of Europe, they don't feel the need to buy property. They see that it is absolutely fine to rent property. And what we obviously need is we need affordable housing, but we also need a decent living wage but the political will has to be there there are there are lots of homes if you go around london you can see lots of homes and places where where houses flats are being built you look at the development at battersea for example where they're completely regenerating that and that is great but about sure. fifty four thousand homes are either planned or under construction the most expensive end of the market and a lot of them will be priced around a million pounds or above Absolutely. It, it, it's a madness. Who can afford that? I mean, and that's why you have to question what is really going on here. And so I, I absolutely, I wasn't in, in London um, yesterday, and I'm not there this weekend, but I do absolutely support that march because we need to stand up to our politicians now and say enough. It is not OK. Bear in mind that a lot of politicians are able to live in London because their expenses take care of them, but they, expenses don't take care of people like you and I and the shop workers. So mm. we really do need to stand up on mass and say this is not acceptable we need homes for people and not for people who don't live in homes sonia poulton journalist and social commentator many thanks for joining us